Hi, it's uh, Joe Mazumdar of Exploration Insights at the January 2023 edition of the Metals Investor Forum. And with me right now, I have the CEO, Frederick Bell, of okay. Elemental Altus. And so Elemental Altus is two different companies that have recently merged. Maybe we could just go a little bit of a bit of background for, for people here that may not know anything about this company, given the plethora of royalty companies out there. And we are talking about a royalty company that's cash flowing with a generative edge. So the, the background is at Altus, where I'd really call them the preeminent royalty generator in Africa. Yeah. And they've been doing it for years, uh, a really impressive track record. Um, and in the last two years, have actually also started um, being active in the in the sort of royalty space right. and acquiring royalties. And they bought um, the Casserone and they bought one the Casserone's royalty Chile. and part of the Newcrest portfolio That's currently right. in Australia. And Elemental, um, which is the Elemental part of the company, um, started in 2017 as a private royalty company, uh, private for three years, listed in 2020, in the middle of COVID and in, in, in TSXV here in Canada, um, and then at the end of 2021 had a hostile takeover bid. Um, by one of the larger royalty companies that wasn't successful. Um, but there were two things that actually did um, have sort of merit. And, and, and one of those was um, critical mass and scale in the royalty space. And um, without us um, having moved more into the royalty space and both teams had known each other well and some of our uh, and both team- both London based. Both London based and some of our team had worked um, yeah. for the other company. Um, it sort of was a very natural conversation. And we had, a, I think, three or four mutual institutional shareholders. So it was a very natural conversation. You put the two companies together. Especially with, I guess, with the uh, the the bid by this other company sort of said, okay, what do we do to get not to get these blind bids anymore? <clears throat> yeah, and and yeah, I think our thesis was always you know, what has real value um, is is not always what the market sees. And um, you know, real assets and and sort of quality of assets and track record um, ultimately will pay off in the long term. And the merger with Altus puts us in a position today where the new Elemental Altus, as of August 2022, formally merged. Um, we have now 11 producing assets um, with 11 different operators in seven countries. So if one operator has a bad quarter, you know, we're at the point where we can ride over it. Yeah. Um, so we have sort of roughly 20 million of revenue. We'll put formal guidance out later this year, US um, for 2023. Um, really well diversified. You don't get that in the sub-billion dollar space. But then alongside it, you've got this enormous upside potential through Altus royalty generation work. And that is being the fourth largest license holder in Egypt after Barrack B2 and Sentiment, um, a 600,000 ounce plus resource in Mali, next to what was a 10 million ounce roughly mine, a tier one mine. Um, and there's a whole portfolio, you know, we can talk on Morocco and other countries and licenses that probably almost gets no value hidden underneath. But the combination, we think, you put it together and you have this really well diversified, low risk producing, cash flowing positive royalty company. Uh, which has grown 80% compound year on year on the revenue side, and you ally it with this royalty generation unit, which is actually self-funding, and we can do that internally, that is going to be putting together these projects and farming them out to really good quality partners in the longer term should create. So the revenue value. growth right now that you might project forward, is that being generated by royalties you already hold, or does that have any sort of planned acquisition or anything modeled in it? So that's only talking about royalties we already own. Um, and so we have um, one royalty that started paying us uh, Mercedes Bear Creek Mining in Mexico. Right. That started that paying used us to be Premier Gold, which was acquired good. by Equinox, Equinox which Creek. sold it to Bear Creek. And it was Yamana who built it. It was Yamana who yeah. built it, yeah. So yeah. a lot of names. And uh, that asset, it's about 700 square kilometer license. Um, and that started paying us from the 28th of July last year, a clause in the royalty agreement. Um, and then uh, there's another asset uh, in, uh, in Cote d'Ivoire. Um, that's just started paying us. Uh, that was part of the new Crest portfolio. Yeah. Yeah. So we've actually had two or three royalties that have been coming on, and some of them sort of ramping up in the last six months. Um, and that's been the, the large driver for the growth in um, royalty revenue over the last year. So the revenue yeah. is visible as it is, it was in your presentation, but you're saying, and uh, you know, from your comp stuff, that you're not getting paid like peer group average for what you're actually generating. That's one upside potential then the other upside potential is is royalties that you could acquire is that is that something else that's a really yeah that's a really good point which is hard to put a, yes. a number on obviously and, and it's very similar to the royalty generation side how do you value 
the track record and experience of people putting together projects, identifying the potential and taking it forwards. Yeah. And time and again, you see companies doing it successfully, but to actually put a monetary value on it is very hard. And the funny thing is that if you look at our royalty portfolio, just on the major producing assets and the material ones, if you took them as a standalone asset base, without the company, without the management, without the IP, without the track record, if you just took those assets, we think you, those would sell in, a, in the royalty market from our market cap or more. Right. And so you're then saying, okay, well, what is everything else worth? And um, we've now executed on um, producing royalties, which are not easy to do, complex, in seven different jurisdictions in the past couple of years. And that gives you a lot of intellectual property. And Altus have um, generated royalties and projects on dozens of projects across multiple countries. And I think it was just recently in Q3, Q4 last year, where they spun out 750 kilometers of license of ground in Morocco yes, across right, 15 yeah. licenses into a newly listed company. We have a 2.5% royalty on it, and we have 2 to $3 million in equity. Yeah. And they put that together for a couple of hundred thousand dollars. And you, you repeat that, and you do it again and again, and we have more and more optionality over more and more ground at other people's cost. Right, and, and what was always interesting about Altus is they could impact differently. They could either do something like Mali yep. and drill it themselves and wait for an acquisition, or they could do something like Morocco with their subsidiary and have that subsidiary either be spun out into a new company and they own a stake in it or a big shareholder and then keep the royalties. There was always multiple ways of trying to derive value. Yeah. Is that something you're going to keep trying to do going forward? Absolutely. And I think a, a large part of it is, is driven by the, the cycle as well. Um, and um, when you talk about, um, I think, you know, part of our strategy going forward is continuing to acquire royalties. We look at the last 18 months and go, there are eight less royalty companies in the sub billion dollar space than there were. Yeah. And that makes a huge difference in terms of um, competition. And when you ally that with market conditions, where actually financings are tougher, we are seeing more opportunities at better prices than we have seen in the last two years. Right now, yeah. On the royalty acquisition right, side. Right, so it's right. really exciting. Because financing got, is more difficult for we've got, Yeah, $17 million in the bank. Um, we're the only sub-billion dollar royalty company that the big banks, National and CIBC, have given a credit facility to. So our borrowing cost is not dissimilar to some of the billion, two billion dollar royalty companies. So that makes a huge difference in terms of being able so let's talk to about that a bit because well. the consolidation of elemental altus brought two you know significant debt uh you know uh long-term debt um, facilities uh, which were high cost and the combination gave you the ability to renegotiate that and lower the cost so can you explain what what happened there and that was something that was instrumental post merger so the um, Altus had a big loan from our larger shareholder, La Mancha, mm -hmm. and um, we had a loan from Sprott Lending, um, which we used before. And when we did the merger, each of those was, call it 10% sort of cost. cost so yeah. not cheap. And with it rising interest rates, that can go up. Um, so about 50, just over $50 million of total debt. And so one of the key... And what um, roughly to service it was? Um, probably five, five, five and a half million dollars yeah. a year. Um, and at the end of the year with interest rising, it was actually looking forward going to be more. Yeah. And so when we um, announced in December that we were, um, our biggest shareholder was putting $27.5 million of their loan into equity. And alongside that, we were um, repaying down the other half of the loan to Sprott. And we'd come out of it with a $50 million credit facility from two of the big banks in Canada who finance all the major royalty companies. And um, I think we talked to in the announcement sort of roughly three to four and a half percent interest rate on it. Mm -hmm. So that is immediately saving us, call it three and a half million dollars a year in interest payments. Right. A synergy on day one. Um, and that makes, a, that makes a huge difference. And part of it is the fact that it was a bigger portfolio and it was even more diversified. And if you think about it from an investment perspective or from a bank's perspective, um, how many mid-tier miners are there with 11 producing assets yeah. across seven countries? Yeah. You can. You know, invest in multi-billion dollar miners and they're not that diversified. To get it in a 200 million market cap company is is unheard of. And, and triple listed. And uh, triple listed in terms like of... Like you're listed in London, you're so listed we're, in Canada. We're and you're just listed. listed in Canada and OTC in the yeah. US now. Yeah. Um, and so post the post the merger, um, we, we actually simplified. Oh, that's right. Because Altus, that, that listing went away yes, and then came back. Exactly. Okay. And um, I think for us, it's... Um, key focus is, is getting the story out there yeah and um you know, if you spread your audiences too thin and um, particularly in the last couple of years travel being difficult i think um this is our first 
in-person conference in Canada. Yeah. <laughs> that was the first presentation we've ever given to investors as a, not just a merged company, but even as Elemental in person. So now I think being able to come and really focus in North America and get the story out there and tell people, and I think every quarter that goes by, we'll be able to demonstrate some of the value in the portfolio and the track record of we have done royalty acquisitions for a million dollars and they've paid us $2 million and they're worth $5 million. And the more we can do that and get that out, I think that's a really powerful message. Uh, so when I owned Altus before the merger, they were getting a lot of news flow from an asset they were progressing themselves, which was in Mali, yes. Diva. Uh, and now you guys have picked up through Altus and uh, La Mancha, uh, uh, you know, ground in Egypt, which I'm actually going to be visiting in a couple of weeks. So how does that work with respect to the value <clears throat> proposition of your company? Well, it's, it's, it's a funny one because um, I, I think we probably feel internally that Mali gets almost no value. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the questions are on the royalties because we have some major assets with really long mine lives, high quality royalties. Like I think our biggest three royalties all have reserve lives over 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, we think they're multi-decade assets and they're paying us, um, based on the first half of last year, $12 million a year. So we get a lot of questions on that. And then the projects that actually are still really material and meaningful, like Mali, Diva Le Campla, um, it sort of almost comes into the background as you get this alongside everything else, but it's certainly not in the background in terms of value. Um, and this is um, this is an asset that Altus did a PEA on um, in the second half of 2022 and uh, $150 million NAV. Um, and it is next to um, a major operating mine. Um, and um, I think from our perspective, we think that we will be able to demonstrate really good value um, from that asset like we did in Morocco and also like we're going to do hopefully with your visit to Egypt shortly where we'll be able to show you some of the projects there and some of the I mean it, it, when you talk to the technical team um, the excitement they have coming back from Egypt and uh, people not having been there for literally decades yeah. in exploration and it has missed the whole circle and uh, so to be able to be there and really be the first people on the ground and have the fourth biggest license package after Barrett B2 and Sentiment um, for a company like us uh, again, it has um, it has really, really exciting potential. And um, I think we're just starting to sort of get results coming back from some of the work we're doing there. Yeah. And uh, hopefully your visit should be good timing. Great. Okay, so so just roughly like catalysts coming up that we can look at uh, in 2023 for somebody that doesn't not familiar with the company. So I think this will be the um, this will be the sixth year of record royalty revenue. Um, and I think already last year, uh, just up to Q3 was a record. So every year since we've started has been a record. So we think this year is going to be another record in terms of royalty revenue. Um, I think close to 20 million is what you're saying. Yep, US. Yep, yeah. US. Um, in terms of that puts us under 10 times revenue, um, price to revenue, um, which for the royalty space, you know, the majors trade at double that. Um, the mid tiers, again, actually pretty 50% premium. So we're undervalued on that basis. But then I think this year we think we're going to be really active on the royalty acquisition front. Um, so I think. There's a number of deals that we've been working on where actually we can see really good value to add into the portfolio um, that we're, we're looking forward to progressing. And on the royalty generation front, um, I think having closed the spin out of Moroccan assets um, at, in the second half of last year, um, I think we're going to continue to work to um, really demonstrate value that is latent value that we do not get credit for in that royalty generation portfolio. Yeah. And again, really highlight the value of the business model where you can do it in the background, you know, you don't hear about it much and it's sitting there and you then do six it like months a private time, company and then yeah, then six months time, out. all of a sudden you have a spin out into a company, you're getting a couple of million dollars in equity, you're getting a royalty and they're going to go to town on it and start, you know, exploration. So if we can do those, you know, in parallel, um, and one of the really, uh, one of the really fun things about the merger that I think you don't think about at the time and you certainly don't as an investor and an investor in other companies is actually the team. And we've got a much, better team now um, with a lot more bandwidth and capacity than we had. And so we are we are running a pretty active exploration in Egypt at the same time as we were looking at royalty acquisitions. We were doing the refinancing with the banks. We were spinning off Morocco. So we were running on four tracks in parallel. Um, and that's something that as Elemental or as Altus independently, yeah, we could never do. have done. Yeah. And, and that helps because as a public company, and you know this, you have fixed costs and overheads. And the more you can do um, and the faster you can move, um, you know, the time value of money, really does have an impact. Right, and retail and a lot of shareholders are impatient. Yeah. Okay, well, great. Thank Fantastic. you very much, Fred. Thank you, Jim.
That's uh, Fred, uh, Fred Bell, uh, CEO of Elemental Altus, a, a newly merged company that's getting its uh, voice out there with respect to what it's uh, driving revenue and also some new potential targets in Egypt and Mali. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's it for me. Uh, it's Joe Mazumda, our Exploration Insights at the Mental Investment Forum at uh, Vancouver, January 2023 edition. Thank you for joining us.